talk about cold fusion and carbon. Carbon and cold fusion, okay? So, <clears throat> cold fusion, the definition of cold fusion is sun-like temperatures that are in a jar. Start in a jar. Here's our synthetic jar. Okay, this is the positive, and this is the negative. In astronomy, there is the word called nucleosynthesis. Whoa, mouthful. Nucleosynthesis is when proton to proton chain reactions occur. Oh my goodness, here we go. So, in the periodic table, hydrogen being one, helium being two, tritium, you know, hydrogen isotope of one, has different neutrons and whatnot. So here's the interesting thing about the byproduct of fusion, star in a jar, is that if you have, let's just say, hydrogen and oxygen, but instead now we have deuterium and oxygen, which is basically heavy water, has neutrons on it, the neutrons help the process called nucleosynthesis. Nucleosynthesis is when you take an atomic number, you jump up to two, you jump up to three, you jump up to four, and so on, right? And you can go all the way up to, I think it's 92 uranium. So far, we know we've gone this far. I don't know how if we can go any further than that, but I speculate that we can, okay? So this is called nucleosynthesis. I'm gonna try my best to spell it. Nucleosynthesis, yep. This is nucleosynthesis. It's when the universe starts building elements up, and this is also what happens in nebula. Nebula formations in space, this is how they grow. And they usually get stuck during nucleosynthesis, there's a sweet spot, and it's iron. It likes to get stuck here. So there's like this thing like that. It likes to, this is its sweet spot. It's the most stable. It's the most stable place. So that's why nebula are basically made up of iron and oxygen and sulfur and all that stuff. And then they electrocoagulate together to make a planet or a moon or an asteroid or whatever. So as you go up the chain, you get to the number six, which is what? Carbon. Okay. Now, here's what's interesting. Did I not mention something about D2O having extra neutrons? And if we do nucleosynthesis in this process, we get to carbon eventually. Depending on, and this is what our research, research suggests, if you put in 30 volts, you'll stair step up to carbon, and then it stops. Let's say we do 60 volts. Okay, so now we do 60 volts input and then we can go to, you know, iron and um, aluminum and titanium and gold, right? All right, cool. All right, what happens if we put 90 volts in? Okay, now we can go all the way up to uranium. Wow, that's cool. But we also make all these other things as we're, we're stair-stepping up the periodic table because we're causing them to fall in just more rapidly. And it's actually kind of an exponential thing too, because the more there's sedimentation being built up, the more it wants to build itself up. It's like a micro planet being formed. Pretty cool. Okay, so carbon. We put 30 volts in and we get to carbon, it stops. It's as far as it wants to go. Well, here's what we found out. Carbon, there's actually two types of carbon. There's organic, and then there's inorganic. Is there not? Here's what we figured out. Is the neutron flux in the middle of the electrodes actually makes and synthesizes organic carbon? it creates these little worms, and they're called diatoms. 
And by the way, just recently, we found diatoms and meteorites. Iron 304, magnetite, basically is a meteorite. We found diatoms in them recently. And we can do that here synthetically. And these diatoms are very special because what they do is they glom on the little particulates and they hold them on their body and they line themselves up. And there is a creature on Earth that does the same thing. It's called a magnetotactic bacteria and they're everywhere in the ocean. A magnetotactic bacteria has these little tentacles and what it does is it takes the minerals from the ocean and it uses them and sucks them in and then synthesizes these little round orbs and their iron oxide Fe304. It synthesizes and makes this stuff and then it secretes it out and it falls to the bottom of the ocean. And you ask yourself, well, why is this diatom taking in, you know, nitrogen and oxygen and making these little tiny orbs? It's to help it align with the magnetic field of Earth, to find the sweet spot where the highest nutrients is in the ocean. It's an organism that's thinking, it's wanting resources, and it's compiling them to use it as a, a method to find more. So we found these diatoms in our vessel after the experiment. So we crossed the barrier from organic or inorganic to organic because of the neutron flux makes it possible. There's a, there's a, it's called, this is actually called electron bifurcation. It's actually a biological term that is basically a fancy word for what the mitochondria do electron bifurcation. So we, I'm telling you essentially is we now are not just alchemists on this planet now, we are basically miniature deities. We can control the biology of the universe. And we don't even know what we can do with that, potentially, we don't know yet. And that's a whole new industry.